So investigations of dysphagia start with a very thorough, thorough uh, history taking. Even from the age of the patient uh, will lead to diagnosis. Uh, all the causes of dysphagia, uh, you, you should keep in mind the, all the causes of dysphagia and ask in relation to that. So if it is a child, there is more chance of a uh, congenital disorders or there is any accidental ingestion of foreign body. So middle aged, there are so many uh, uh, reasons like uh, globus pharynges or um, uh, gastroesophageal reflux, all are there. But there is more chance of any neurological disorders or benign tumors. And in elderly, there is more chance of a malignancy. And even though there are uh, all other reasons will come, but you should be more um, vigilant of uh, getting a malignancy. And also try to locate the um, lesion. Sometimes the patient will point if it is an acute um, tonsillitis or pharyngitis causing an uh, enlarged jugular diagnostic lymph nodes even the patient will point there below and behind the angle of mandibular until I am having pain here while soloing uh, because sometimes the patient will tell I am having pain uh, difficulty or some uh, the feeling of some something pricking while soloing here so try to locate that the exact location and usually uh, oropharyngeal or pharyngeal dysphagia problems will be related uh, to the uh, lip or the tongue or the patient can locate that areas and if it is in the esophagus the patient will more of tell you as uh, feeling of food sticking in the lower throat in the neck or in the uh, retrosternal area or in the epigastrium that will be more towards an esophageal causes and ask on the onset of uh, how they started how long you are having such problems duration is it progressing or it is like same severity as it happened at the early stage then ask on the severity of problem how severe it is type of food causing this dysphagia is it more for liquid or it is more for solid or for semi solid is there any elevating factors like antacids what are you doing to alleviate the problem. You are, are you taking any medication? Are you getting better with medication? Then associated symptoms like what? Associated symptoms like nasal regurgitation or regurgitation of food. If the food is regurgitating immediately after uh, swallowing, there is more chance of an obstructive lesion. And if the patient complaining of regurgitation so many hours after taking the food, there is more chance of a pharyngeal pouch. Like that you have to correlate. Then if there is a constant feeling of lump in the throat, what will be the first diagnosis? Yes, globus pharynges. Okay. And also you have to ask the past medical history. Is there the patient taking any drugs at present? Because there are so many drugs, I already explained, so many drugs causing dysphagia. Or there is any history of surgeries? Is there any... Um, past medical history, all that you have to ask. And so the history taking, a thorough history taking is very much important. So first, it's the most important thing in investigation of as a case of dysphagia. Now, a thorough examination, examination of head and neck, examination, that is thorough examination of head and neck, especially the oral cavity, the dentition, oropharynx, uh, indirect laryngoscopy, You can use uh, indirect laryngoscopy or a flexible naso uh, laryngoscopy can be used. So all the areas of the pharynx, larynx including the movement of the vocal cord and also especially look for pooling of saliva uh, anywhere either in the vellicula or in the piriform fossa. That is very important. And in the cranial nerve examination what are things you have to examine? Especially look for uh, movement of the tongue. Uh, ideally the cranial nerve we are examining from 9 to 12, 9, 10, 11 and 12 cranial nerve has to be examined. Especially don't forget to look the movement of the tongue. Is there any wasting or fasciculations of the tongue? Look for gag reflex and also for cuff reflex and pharyngeal and laryngeal. Pharyngeal sensation as well as laryngeal sensation has to be checked 
Vocal cord mobility is also very important. All these has to be has to be examined uh, along with the cranial. Then in the neck, you have to look for any cervical lymph node enlargement or status of thyroid. Then laryngeal crepitus present or absent. Then integrity of the laryngeal cartilages. This this much is very important. Okay, so integrity of the laryngeal cartilage. Then uh, laryngeal crepitus present or absent. Then examination of the thyroid gland, presence of any enlargement of the cervical lymph node. Okay. And along with this, don't forget to go for a general examination of the patient. In the general examination, especially look for malnutrition or weight loss, abdominal uh, masses in any, epigastric pain or uh, any neurological disorders, then muscle wasting, fasciculations of the muscle. All these you have to examine. So, detailed history, then uh, examination uh, of the thorough examination of the head and neck with the special mention to all these and also general and neurological examination is very important. By doing all this in your uh, examination history taking, it will only point towards the cause. It will, be, it will not reveal the cause. It will only point towards the cause. To get an exact diagnosis, we still need some blood test and also some special investigations. In the investigations, apart from thorough uh, medical and surgical history and examination, thorough examination of the uh, head and neck, this uh, blood tests are important. So do a full uh, blood count because anemia can be, due, because there is malabsorption, there is chance of anemia is there, it should be, will be reduced. And if there is uh, erythrocyte sedimentation rate, ESR and uh, C-reactive protein is increased, it can be due to two reasons. One, there is chance of malignancy or there can be a chronic inflammatory disorder. Okay. Then do a liver and renal function test if you suspect any uh, nutritional imbalance or metastasis into liver and lung, liver and kidneys. If you suspect a goiter or thyroid uh, malignancy, go for a thyroid function test and the uh, creatine kinase level will be elevated in cases of what myopathies. We can divide the other investigation or special investigations into under radiology. So radiological investigations. Uh, the radiology investigations uh, come under the main headings of one is a barium solo. That is the conventional barium solo or it can be a video fluoroscopy. Video uh, fluoroscopy of different uh, phases of soloing. This is a very important investigation. Or it can be a CT or an MRI. That depending upon the uh, your suspicion, these are the radiological investigations. And then uh, there is uh, endoscopic uh, evaluation. E regarding each one, we can uh, explain in detail. Uh, fibroscope, fibro optic endoscopic evaluation of soloing and video endoscopic evaluation of soloing. Fibro optic endoscopic evaluation of soloing and video endoscopic evaluation of soloing a very important uh, investigation in case of dysphagia. And next one is manometry. In manometry, you have the pharyngeal manometry. Then esophageal manometry. They are all conventional. And uh, the reason is HR, that is high resolution manometry. This is usually asked in uh, DNB and uh, postgraduate examination. In recent advance, HRM, there are so many variations also, and mano fluoroscope. Don't worry, I'll explain each one in detail. 
So under manometry, pharyngeal and esophageal, then high resolution manometry and manofluoroscopy. There are also uh, other investigations like continuous recording of the respiration, especially continuous monitoring of the uh, oxygen saturation by a pulse oximeter. Then uh, ultrasound, uh, props are kept to know the uh, soft tissue densities in the oral cavity, oropharynx and also the movement of hyoid bone during swallowing. Then esophageal pH monitoring in a 24 hour ambulatory basis and skin graphy and also uh, lingual pressure changes, lingual pre pressure recording. and electromyography to know the muscle activities of the tongue and also other muscles involved in respiration. So these are the, uh, apart from history and uh, you know, physical examination, these are the blood tests, radiology investigation, endoscopy, manometry and other tests that will lead to a definitive diagnosis of the cause of dysphagia.